Join the conversation in Tipperary. Contact us through Facebook, Twitter or email tiptoday at tipfm.com. And you're very welcome back to Tip Today. Big response to uh, Connor's chat with me there. And again, we will return to that, we promise. But right now, joined live in studio by Superintendent Eddie Golden. Good morning to you, Eddie. Good morning, Fran. Good morning, just listeners. ahead of a bank holiday, and we'll talk about that in just a few moments' time. But uh, tell me about the RSA and the phone. And uh, was it was there a recent uh, workshop? Or a... Yeah, the RSA had a recent conference, and it kind of featured... Um, in particular about the distracted driving because it has been identified and we've spoken about it before that the distracted driving now is starting to have its impact on road collisions and road fatalities uh, and we and we know that for, for a fact now that a lot of the... And even from listening to the commentary from your own listeners over the last number of weeks and, and I know driving is, is one of the concerns everybody has or being a road user now, not even just a driving um, and the distracted driving aspect to it obviously has has come into it. So just to remind people as well of, like the mobile device has changed so much over the years originally it was only designed you know, to take calls yes. and send texts. Yeah. Um, then it developed into something that we were able to use for emails. Now you can do calendars uh, all different apps now are available as well. So, you know, the device, <clears throat> if we were to be realistic about it, is something now has become part of people's daily routine. And it's, uh, I suppose, the RSA fundamentally, you know, enforcement is part of it. But it's that whole management of the device now is what we're talking about. And yeah, I suppose because it's not going to go away, Eddie. It's, it's not going to go away. Right. No. And even when you talk about people walking now, some people are liable just to walk right out in front of traffic because they're on their phone. So it is, it's not just the cars now, it's it's moved into all aspects of of the roads and people on the roads and road users. You know, I, I saw somebody um, uh, on a horse and trap the other day uh, on, uh, on their on phone. The, on the phone. You know, uh, somebody on a horse another time during the summer. So it's it's gone everywhere now. Yeah. So it's it's something that we need to, I suppose, talk about and, and be realistic about it. And just like some of the surveys as well, which which took place, um, just to remind people. So uh, the the attitude survey, which was taking place in 2022, you know, 70% of drivers admitted to using their phone while driving, 32% read messages or emails, 25% checked social media, 27% were writing messages or emails while they were driving, 28% were talking on the phone without um, holding the carcass, it. Yeah. yeah, without the car yeah. 20% responded to social media messages and 20% were taking photos or videos which they were going to share on social media while driving. So, if we just take that as a snapshot of how people are actually um, using the phone within the vehicle for the moment, um, it is quite quite worrying and quite concerning. And I suppose it's something that coming into the bank holiday weekend, we will be focusing again on on that enforcement piece. And and we have been enforcing the the, the mobile phone, like our mobile phone detections for the first uh, eight months of this year are up fifteen percent. And um, our detections between April and August of this year, 2024, were the highest in almost three years. Um, so again, it's it's something which is is something we're trying to monitor from Angara Shikona's point of view. But again, the mindset change, Fran, that has to happen, um, I think is something which we need to try and focus on. How we're going to do that, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Education is going to be some part of it. Um, actually, some of the, the most effective um, we'll say strategies that has happened is when young people the younger people really start saying to their parents you know stop using the mobile phone we used to have it with the seatbelt sheriff yeah. you know and even yeah, yeah. when somebody gets into the car that the, the child in the back makes sure that the parents are wearing it so you know we're going to have to start thinking outside the box mm. to try and uh, get people's but, mindset but changed let's, let's be clear about it Eddie are you in any doubt whatsoever that mobile phone devices uh, they're, they're, they're causing road accidents and they're causing road deaths. Are you 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 have no doubts about that? I've no right? doubt about that at this stage. Right. So um, so to be absolutely clear about it, they are killing people and they are causing accidents. They they absolutely are, and it's the you know that um, mindset of people now that because they're checking their phones. Um, they're not doing anything wrong. There's, you know, because the car has become this safe environment where people think they can just bring all aspects of their life into the car. Um, you know, it, it is an addiction issue as well. Insofar as people just can't leave them down. Yeah. Um, some of the the surveys as well with the RSA. Um, you know, it's it's across all age groups now all genders it's not specific to any mm. type so where before we were talking about the speeding might have been male orientated historically and the uh, suggestions would be that you know female drivers may not be 
have the propensity to speed as much as males. But when it comes to the mobile phone use, um, right across the we're board. right across the board, um, and it's something that we're going to have to try and get drivers so they won't voluntarily stop it at the moment. So we'll have to look at technology as well and the technology in the phones and the phone manufacturers. So it's it's far more than you it or is, I are going and, to solve this morning. I noticed the other night as well. I, I mean, I I use it as I'm sure you do as well. You know, for for Google Maps and and uh, the like to find my way around the country. But the other night I discovered that the, it, it's so difficult to see it on the map that that in itself is a distraction when you're using it to find your way around and and that's re- that's a really good point Fran because uh, during the RSA conference as well you know the v- visual distractions eyes off the road um hands off the wheel and then the cognitive distraction of something else being tasked into your mind so it's it's quite complex the the science behind it mm. of why people are becoming distracted now um uh, but again, you're right. If if we look at the cars now, have they have evolved as well? Um, Twenty years ago, touch screens, all that thing was a, a thing of of the future. Mm-hmm. Now it's it's part of our reality. And if you look at how complex a car is and how um, computerized they've become, and the screens and the touch screens and all that, so all that now is is probably adding to. Um, the distracted piece. I would agree with you. To so far as it's not just a mobile phone, yeah, we're, yeah. we're moving into a, a, n- a new era with the technology. But also, there's the, the familiarization of yourself with your vehicle that you know where stuff is and that you know where the complicated piece is. You know that you don't actually do it when you're driving. Then so you know some of the the things. I I always was a firm believer, and this goes back to my driving school. You set yourself up to drive before you actually move off. Right. So you check your you mirrors, prepare. you check everything else, yes. you put on your air, you, you make sure there's good flow, you make sure your windows are demisted. Um, but also now, before you move off, you know, if you need to put on your heated seat, if you want to um, put on whatever it may be on the radio or link your phone to it or mirror your phone or use Android Auto or um, whatever way you want to link your phone, that all should be done before you move off. Yeah. And it should be done in such a way that... An, put the phone then into the the glove box or into the central armrest and a lot of cars actually have chargers within those yeah. to charge yeah. your phone but once it's out and it's available you look the the, the research is suggesting now that people will go for it and then that will obviously r- increase the risk of having the collisions all oh, right okay so mind yourself out there is the and mind each other i suppose as well a bank holiday eddie bank holiday we're starting our campaign uh, on this thursday morning <laughs> So it will run from Thursday the 24th of October and conclude at 7 uh, a.m. on Tuesday the 29th of October. So we've, you know, the bank holiday weekend, with it comes, it's it's uh, the usual advice is that we'll be talking to people. There's a high risk of collision uh, during this period as well. Um, lo- looking at it, you know, we're looking at our enforcement, but the lifesaver and offensive activity, you know, during the high risk periods of between uh, 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock period in the afternoons now, seem to be on October bank holiday weekends, maybe when a lot of people are travelling, there's a risk of uh, collisions, that's what the stats would tell us. Uh, high risk of the drink driving then, obviously between 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the morning are the, the key areas where we've yes. we probably come across a lot, which is obvious enough that people are going to socialise and they're going to go out um, or have, a, what's happening now is a lot of people are having a few drinks at home and then going out into the car. So those type of decisions uh, are absolutely Absolutely, um, affecting people's safety on the roads. And again, our, our key messages will be that, you know, uh, intoxicated driving, speeding, mobile phone use, to distraction and the uh, seatbelt offences, again, to make sure everybody in the car is belted up uh, during this period. And um, as every day, you know, why is this weekend any different to any, any other weekend? But again, it's the, the to make sure people are aware of that. And can I just mention as well about the lighting of the vehicles so we're coming into the change of the hour now again Mm. Mm. and I think it's a good time at this stage that you'd actually check your car to make sure all the lights are working or get somebody else with you to do this or whatever vehicle you're driving um, whether it's a truck um, a bus I I, I would know a lot of the professional drivers do this as a daily daily checklist they'll go around their vehicles to make sure it's roadworthy make sure all the lights are working it's not something that is part of a normal um, drivers car drivers or motorcycle or whatever it might be routine and it needs to be specifically coming into the, the bank holiday weekend now it's not just any bank holiday weekend of course because Halloween is almost upon us so we've got those uh, 
banger things going off already causing hassle around the county, Eddie, as I'm sure you know. Yeah, it's starting earlier and earlier, unfortunately. Yeah. And look, these fireworks come into the country from, from different um, sources now. Uh, they are illegal. You know, there's only very, very um, specific fireworks that are allowed to be used by licensed um, operators for fireworks. And, you know, it is an offence to you know, light an unlicensed firework, throw a lit firework at any person or property, um, have an unlicensed firework on your possession, have a licensed firework with the intention of selling it or giving it to somebody else. And again, on Garish Yukana, our powers in relation to that were we have power to request your name and address, request you to go to the guard station to verify your name and address if we're not satisfied, search you without warrant, um, enter or search any vehicle, vessel or aircraft without warrant if we suspect there's firearms there as well, seize and obtain those. But again, it's the it's the dangers associated with the fireworks and I know the fire service are always, um, you know, around this time of year um, advocating those safety messages. But I, I would also feel for people that have, you know, animals... Um, yeah. small animals in particular who get very very frightened with the fireworks and a lot of the complaints we get Fran is from people living um, in maybe in towns and um, fireworks are being left off in close proximity to those um, people living and it's it's causing a lot of distress uh, we do get calls, we do respond to those calls we do go out but again it's very difficult after the event to, to obviously mitigate against it but we are trying um, to watch the the sources where those fireworks are coming from. And again, our advice is to parents in particular uh, this Halloween to look, first of all, don't give your um, children any fireworks. Mm. If they're going to an event where there's going to be fireworks at it, you know, those fireworks are illegal. You know, you can be guaranteed yeah. at this stage they will be illegal. And very dangerous. And very dangerous. Yeah. And you're just, I suppose, exposing your, your family um, to... Um, not just the, the noise of it, but the dangers associated yeah, with it, course, the burns yes, and, the, well. and the injuries. The, the trick-or-treating as well, you know, kids out and about and that sort of thing. I mean, both motorists and the people themselves have a responsibility to mind themselves. You know? yeah, it's, going to be, it's going to be a busy time, yeah. uh, depending on, on how the weather goes. And I know there's a number of events around the county as well that are happening. Um, yeah. uh, actually, I was speaking to Andy Maloney this morning. He was talking about Scarefest in Care this weekend. And, and again, there will be a lot of... Uh, young people in the vicinity of, of care and other towns around mm. the county. Andy also mentioned to me that it's sold out event. There's no point coming to that event looking for tickets at this stage. It, they're all gone and it'll only add to the extra crowds that are there. So they want the people that have bought their tickets to enjoy it. But you're right, Fran. Um, Trick or Treat is now part of, I suppose, our our, um, our festive mm. uh, events. And again, we just want to be mindful that children will be dressing up um, out and about uh, looking for their sweets at the doors, whatever it might be. So for motorists or for any road user, just to pay particular and extra attention to those people um, and those young people uh, over this um, weekend. Very good. And just finally, Eddie, I was speaking to uh, John McCormick yesterday, the uh, crime prevention officer. He was saying um, Operation Thor is up and running as well. You know, as Operation Thor is up and running. And again, we're trying to, I suppose, be strategic as well um, and looking at the areas where... Um, where, where crime has happened and you know unfortunately in Tipperary the last couple of weeks we've been hit by a number of um, burglaries in specific areas yeah. um, houses more vacant houses more more, more than not um, uh, it's very seldom that somebody will actually go and burgle a house where there's somebody in, it, in there um, but again when we look at it uh, we've had a number of people disturbed as well and they've moved on yeah. so it's the they're looking for the easy hit um, whoever is doing these burglaries are um, watching, looking for the, the place where there's no lights maybe coming on, um, gates opened, uh, easy access. Um, and again, that whole neighbourhood watch and community uh, alert system where people could, and I think John mentioned this yesterday, you know, whatever small it may be, it, it may just, if there's a suspicious activity in an area, uh, we will respond to that uh, activity, hopefully come across those people, find out their bona fides, and you'd be surprised the amount of crime that we do solve, or at least we have an idea yeah. then who's behind it, and then we can put other operations into place to target those. Very good. Ba uh, based on a call from somebody. Based, based on, on very little information, information at times, and um, I'll we'll be right. very grateful to get it. Good to see you, Eddie, and thanks very much indeed. Superintendent Eddie Golden with us. News and information is coming up.
Tip today with Fran Curry. With Slattery's Garage, puck on. You can't beat experience. With over 50 years maintaining Peugeot cars and vans, we like to call ourselves the experts. Call Slattery's Garage for a free vehicle health check today. 067 24111 or slatterysgarage.ie. 